I think the first step was in uh, getting the right players into a band that all were like-minded and then uh, seeing how they adapted to the material that I was writing most of the material at the time. There was a couple other people that were starting to write, but I had the finished material. So I listened to the way the guys were playing it. It was just, it's just everything fell into place as a band. So when we first started playing, I think one of the first rehearsals, we rehearsed Hold the Line. And uh, that became a big, big record for us, you know, right out of the bat. So we had confidence, a lot of confidence from the get go. And uh, uh, to this day, I think we look back and saying, uh, you know, it, it just validated us as a band and uh, helped us help launch our career. If you if you compare when you wrote Hold the Line and then when you, when you actually brought it to the band, um, did it change a lot? Did it alter a lot? Was it? No, it just it just filled in with all the uh, right parts. You know what I mean? I just had a piano part. I was playing it, but I had heard the guitars in my head, and I heard the the drums in my head too. But Jeff or Carl, I never had to tell him what to play. He always knew exactly the right thing to play. And same with Steve Lukather. As soon as I started playing the piano part, he jumped on it and played the right guitar part that I was hearing in my head. And so uh, the bass was simple enough, and the and uh, Bobby Kimball uh, sang the shit out of it uh, when uh, he, he got a hold of the melody. You know. And is it if you how do you what what is it like 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 you were saying that Jeff and and Steve they immediately knew what to play when you had in your head is it musical chemistry or what what is it yeah total musical chemistry and and like minded musicians but you have to have the technique you have to really know be a, a have your technique down and your uh, your ability to play and, and ears and your ability to listen a lot you know as, as a songwriter. That's what you try and do, I think, is when you when you're playing other people's songs, I think you try and play it like it was your own song and imagine it that way. So you leave room and space for the for the singer and the and the uh, and the various uh, uh, parts of the arrangement to, to flow. So no really big egos then. No what? No really big egos are needed then. No, no, you got you got to leave the egos at the door. That's what Quincy Jones always says. Leave your ego at the door. Yeah. Um, well, you've wrote, you've written many songs. Is there one song, one total song that you say, well, that's that's my p- p- pinnacle. That's the one I really like. Uh, I would have to say Rosanna is probably one of the pinnacle songs that I've written and uh, that I enjoy most because it's it's got these different sections in it, and uh, it's it's interesting, I think. And uh, and the band plays, gives a powerful performance, and you actually see it demonstrate. The, the different players in the band. It starts out with a drum intro, then it goes into a, a synthesizer solo, then it goes into a guitar solo, then there's more piano and guitar at the very end. So I think it demonstrates our, our, our the band's uh, exceptional musicality and, uh, and shows what we can do under the uh, frame of a pop record, what you can get out, get, get away with, you know. Yeah, you mean musical wise? I mean, not not yeah. your typical typical songwriting, but actually more and and enduring and, and yeah. Yeah, we, we, we basically we just try and see what we can get away with, you know. <laughs> uh, it, what what did you get away with with that song? Can you explain? Well, we got a, we got a spin synth solo in the middle of a here's a pop song that normally would have like a saxophone or a, or maybe a guitar, but it's just a short solo, one little short solo. And there would be a two. There ended up being two solos that were tremendous solos. I mean, they were a monumental uh, uh, playing on it. Well, on the Steve Picaro did on the uh, on the synth solo, and uh, and Steve Lukather did an incredible guitar solo. So it was just at the very end we just faded out jamming. Like uh, we have a, a band in the United States called Little Feet that we is one of our favorite bands, and so I kind of. We paid a, did a little tribute to Little Feet at the end there. Played a little New Orleans kind of music there. So uh, that's that's that had, that had, that song had it all. Did you did you discuss the song with your dad? Um, after I after I recorded it, I did. I played him a little bit of it, you know. And he liked how it had the uh, little it had a little swinging. It swung like jazz did. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, he liked it a lot. 